This is Twit. Apple had the source of their iOS boot code posted on GitHub last week. And it's not surprisingly called iBoot, which is the which is the the code which first runs as the system powers up in order to form the anchor of the chain of trust, which brings the whole system online. Um, and we've talked about the way secure boot technologies in general work, and Apple's is no different. That is, you you start with some some highly trusted code, which is probably in ROM or is, you know, signed and its signature is verified in a way that cannot be interfered with, intercepted, contravened, you know, just, you, there's no way to, to subvert that. That code comes up, make sure that it is, that it has not been tampered with, and then it goes and loads the next stage in the boot sequence. And similarly, after, after obtaining it from, from storage, but before ever executing it, absolutely verifies that it too has had its integrity maintained and is then safe to transfer control to. Control then transfers to it and it, it repeats that process, essentially forming a chain of trust where each link is is independently verified from the code that's already running prior to turning control over to it. The point is that the the entire integrity of the system depends upon the anchor, that original code. And so it is it is significant that the source for that was posted last week. Now, Intel, I mean, Intel, Apple has sort of downplayed this a little bit. Uh, in their statement, they said old source code from three years ago appears to have been leaked. But by design, the security of our products, writes Apple, does not depend upon the secrecy of our source code. Well, we know that that's good. Um, there are many layers of hardware and software protections built into our products, they write, and we always encourage customers to update to the newest software releases to benefit from the latest protections, unquote. At the same time, we also know that this kind of core code doesn't change very much. I mean, th this was part of iOS 9 back in 2016, when this code leaked. And it's certainly the case that now we're at, at 11, um, there have, there have, may well have been some changes. There may be some, uh, and probably are some, some new hardware in the later, uh, so, yeah, some, some new hardware, security hardware in the later iPhone hardware. So it's probable that the iBoot code was tweaked a bit. At the same time, we also know that a lot of code doesn't change. Um, you know, we're still, you know, Windows users are seeing dialog boxes. If you drill down underneath the UI very far back from Windows 2000, that hasn't changed. You know, the, if, 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 if you bring up the, the network adapter details dialog, that's the, that's the dialog from Windows 2000. You know, that, that core code that is done tends not to change. So Apple's understandable sensitivity is not only to the fact of the leak, but to the fact that, that while you, while their statement suggests correctly that they're not depending upon obscurity, it's also the case that bad guys or, you know, phone hackers will be salivating over the idea of having access to this iBoot source because by attacking it, by attacking the source code from the, van, from, from, from the standpoint of trying to find something that was done wrong, um, you, you can just get a lot of ideas, a, a, lot of, 
a lot of um, of like you know potential leads for for where to attack. So the interesting thing about this, from a from a sort of a reality of of keeping things private, is that a, an intern, a low level what was described as a low level employee in some of the coverage. And I also saw the, the term intern used uh, a couple of years ago, had some friends in the, uh, in the phone hacking in the, in the jailbreaking community. And, and he was at Intel, he or she don't know was, I'm sorry, I keep saying Intel was at Apple and the friends were pushing and pushing and pushing to to have this person share this iBoot source that they and a bunch of other tools as well that this person had access to. So this was a small group of trusted individuals. And I, I should mention that Motherboard uh, had really good reporting and coverage of this. They interviewed under promises of uh, uh, anonymity, a lot of these people who had firsthand knowledge of how this happened. That So there was a, a very tight-knit, small group who did, re- friends of this intern, who did receive this iBoot source code two years ago under the promise that it would not be shared outside their little circle. I'll give it to you, man, but you got to swear, swear you don't give us to anybody else. Exactly. You got to swear, and, pinky swear, man. <laughs> and to their credit, I guess, it that promise endured for for 2 years. But the code existed nevertheless on thumb drives or on hard drives, you know, outside of Apple. And those, some secrets are just too good to keep. You know, they're just too difficult. And so you can imagine that w- when it was new, when it was fresh, when it had just been received, it was, oh, nobody else has this. This is super cool. And, you know, and so they had sort of a, the, the people outside of Apple had a their own sort of uh, had their own proprietary interest in keeping it safe. But those kinds of secrets are hard to keep. And so they wanted to share it. One of them and no that within this group, they don't today know who leaked it outside of their little group. But Presumably someone did. Somebody had a friend and, of course, said, OK, um, I'm going to share this super cool code with you. But you absolutely have to, you know, double pinky swear that it, it goes no further. Oh, of course, of course, of course. And, of course, you know, who knows? Maybe it was that person. You know, the point is that that some secrets are just too hard to keep. And, and so through essentially what amounts to social engineering and insider disclosure, this court, this code got out. This wasn't a flaw in a highly academically scrutinized cryptographic cipher, you know, where, you know, oh my God! If you know, if you number crunch this thing for for twelve, you know, CPU centuries, then you you there was a chance that you could find some information leakage. No, this was a intern who was at Apple who had access to this and didn't you know did sign an NDA. Of course, there was some mention of that in the motherboard coverage that. The, 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 the person, of course, I mean, he had to sign a, a confidentiality agreement in order to to be there and to have this kind of access. But that didn't, in fact, prevent it from escaping. So so it's not clear that this I mean, this is not probably devastating. It is true that Apple, um, the, you know, the, the, the 
the other side of this code being as mature and unchanging as it probably is, is that it is probably mature. But Apple did immediately use a DMCA takedown order to get this yanked from GitHub. It, will, it also was somewhere else. Um, I can't remember uh, that it that where it, it was removed from. So basically, Apple immediately moved to clean this up. And I imagine there are there are you know Apple has a security team that is probably hot on the trail of how this happened. Uh, working to remove as much of this from public access as possible. But it was on GitHub for, you know, like the fact that it was there at all means it disappeared. I mean, it got loose. So it is now out in the jailbreaking, the greater jailbreaking community. Uh, someone whose handle was... Uh, Zioshiba, uh, Z-I-O-S-H-I-B-A, was the uh, pseudonym of the person who posted this on on GitHub. And it was uh, among the people who knew of the original leak, this was – it was identified as a copy, whatever that means. But what, what we understand – what we understand it means is that there was – this was a subset of what – of the total leak package – so there was more that was leaked than ended up being posted. So maybe the disclosure from the from this inner the, if the original uh, small group was less than what than, than all that was posted, or you know who knows what path the the leak took to get to GitHub. But it was there and it was up for some length of time. It got a lot of attention, and so you know. I don't have access to it. I have no interest in it, but you know, I'm not inside that community. And I, you have to imagine now that there are, there are lots of eyeballs scrutinizing the code, looking to see whether, Oh, look, you know, here's an unsafe type conversion where if we're able to get a negative something in here, blah, 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 who knows on the, on, uh, at the same time, this is, not code that probably interacts with the outside world much. You is you know it's not accepting random parameters and things. You know it's the the fact that it, it is as root as it is means that it is probably not subject to to external manipulation. On the other hand, it is knowledge which Apple did not want made available, and it did get out. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, the interesting I'm, I, there are a couple interesting conversations uh, that are unknown. You raised one, which is how much is this code modified? Apple says it's old code, but as you point out, why, why modify iBoot? Right. Uh, I didn't look at the code, so I don't know how you know how complex it is, uh, or how hardware dependent it is. This came from iOS. What did they say? It was 2014, so it would have been iOS nine, I think. Yep. Um, but the other one is, um, and obviously it's security through obscurity, and of course you don't want to give it away. But how much damage is done? People, uh, the guy Jonathan Levin, the guy who verified the code, said, "Yeah, well, I've disassembled the boot, iBoot, and it matches my disassembly." So, yep. what would you get? You would get symbol names. You get a symbol table that you wouldn't have that with a disassembly. Um, that's about it, right? Um, yeah. Um, you, um, uh, when when you disassemble, you're inherently making lots of guesses. Okay. And so and so you're 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 doing a lot of reverse engineering. S sometimes stuff happens like w with specific hardware registers right. where bits are know. being poked yeah. and stuff. Right. And so right. that's like an unknown. But if you've got the names of those, the actual you know the the, the actual nomenclature that goes along with that it's you know there's a lot more that you're getting so you know you can really t you, you you can look at it both ways i don't think it's the end of the world by any means um and frankly i'm surprised this doesn't happen more often i yeah. mean the, well, it has happened it, once before i think right right yeah right but but still i mean i the idea that a company the size of apple with as much intellectual property as they have, that this that this is like an this is a major event because it's it's considered an unprecedented leak. Um, that you know that alone is 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 impressive, uh, an impressive statement about Apple's security. 
I think they're doing yeah. a good job yeah. overall. Yeah, yeah. Why then intern had access to the source code is another question. But That's, yeah. You yeah. can imagine there'll be some internal uh, uh, um, yeah. surveilling of their processes. But it of, may be the, an indicator that they, they didn't care too. that much. You know, like saying, yeah, well, fine. If it gets out, it gets out. Yeah, it could be. Yeah.